Deuteronomy 33, 1 through 7. This is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. With him were myriads of holy ones, at his right a host of his own. Indeed, O favorite among peoples, all his holy ones were in your charge. They marched at your heels, accepted direction from you. Moses charged us with the law as a possession for the assembly of Jacob. There arose a king in Jershuin, where the leaders of the people assembled, the united tribes of Israel. May Reuben live and not die out, even though his numbers are few. And this he said of Judah, O Lord, give heed to Judah and bring him to his people. Strengthen his hands for him and be a help against his adversaries. Say Merry Christmas. I mean, uh, Happy New Year. Thank you. Shall we pray? Well, thank you so much for this time. And we are here to worship you and listen to your word. Let this time pour your Holy Spirit upon us. So may you understand your word into our heart and apply in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Now we have today these two items. One is an old typewriter, and the second one is the laptop computer. And these two items actually represent about our attitude toward this past year and upcoming year. I don't know if you can see this old uh, typewriter. I haven't actually used this one. But this typewriter is a hard to type and hard to erase. Once you type and make a mistake, then you need to use some other tools, which are you know, white, white out liquid and a knife. I've heard, I heard, okay, I haven't used the typewriter. I've heard that before this white out liquid was invented, people used this knife, this kind of knife, and scratch out the mistake. So it's hard to use this, hard to type, hard to erase. You might see your life as this typewriter. You know, you might think that your life is tough and difficult. You make a lot of mistakes. You want to erase all the mistakes you made, but it's hard to erase. So there are a lot of scars and cuts in your life. This year gives you a lot of scars and cuts. What you can see your life as this laptop computer and easy to type, save, and erase. You can see your life as very successful and easy. You make a lot of mistakes, but you erase them all and start all over and until you get the things that you want and you need. So we have these two items, machine, and which one could resonate more with your life in this past year? Which one could be? Typewriter or laptop computer? You know, in our Christian journey, our lives could be both the typewriter, and the laptop computer. As we live in our lives, sometimes we go through a hard time and tough time, but all the things that we went through are saved in God's mind and saved in God's computer and makes us who we are today. Our sins and errors that we might have committed this past year were deleted by the Lord, so we are clear and righteous. But the moments that we committed to the sin and the moments that we are blessed by the Lord are still remaining in our heart and makes us humble and obedient to the Lord. We are not really separate from what we did in the past. We are connected, and God 
remembers what we did, so we have to remember what God has done in our lives. In today's passage, Moses is talking about exactly these two items representing. Right before he leaves this world, he is giving his final blessing to the Israelites. After 40 years of journey in the wilderness, now Moses is standing on Mount Nebo and looking toward the promised land. It took 40 years to reach that point. Now I'm thinking about this once in a while and imagine what I would say and do if I were Moses. What would you do or say if you were Moses? At the last moment, after finishing all the journeys given by the Lord. At the beginning of what he says, he said, verse 2, Lord came from Sinai and done from Seir and shone forth from uh, Paran. Here Moses talked about three different uh, geographical locations. Actually, we have a map. Uh, ben, would you uh, put it up there? It's a very interesting part that Moses talks about uh, Sinai and Paran and Seir. When you see the red color is Sinai and black is a Paran and yellow is a Seir and the, the arrow, the yellow, red arrow, the top right is the mountain Nebo where it, the Israelite and Moses are gathering together. And the green dot, green line is the root of Israel's journey from Egypt to the promised land. So the three location, three geographical locations are not the names of the city, but it's a part of a geographical section, such as when you say the Boxville, commun- Boxville County, it means you know, it includes all the small towns in this area. So Sinai, Shear, and Paran include all, mo- almost all areas, all the journeys that Moses and the Israelites and went through. So technically Moses talks about we have to go back and remember what we have been through and what God has done in our life. That's what Moses talks about in this passage. The why is Moses talking about the things that happened in the past at this most important moment in his life. Now, by the time Moses uh, gives this blessing, and there is no leader at, at the time, Moses is about to leave this world, and Joshua is not a leader yet. He's going to be a leader a little later, but by the time uh, Moses is uh, speaking about the blessing, Joshua is not a leader. And also a few miles from where they are right now is the Jordan River that they are about to come across. So the Israelites know a big battle is is coming soon. And most of the Israelites are also a new generation. They are excited to come across the river. They've been through 40 years of journey, so now they are about to enter into the promised land and settle down their lives. They must be excited. They must be exhilarated. The now Moses talks about, hey, look back and see what we have been through. You know, there is an old Chinese saying, the young eat their dreams to live, and the old eat their past to live. What that means, the old find their uh, value and purpose in pursuing their goal and accomplishing, but the old find their value and purpose in seeing what they have done in the past. But we are God's children. 
the God's children's perspective, we find our value in what God has done in the past and seeing who we were in the Lord and find our purpose and our goal in today in the Lord. This is called divine perspective. Divine perspective is you find God in your past and see what God has done for your life and find your identity, find yourself today and look to the future and see what you need to do in the Lord. That's God's perspective. So Moses is talking about the divine perspective that you have to find who you are, you have to find who God is in the past, and see yourself in today, and see what you need to do when you come across the Jordan River. You know, it seems to me that what Moses said is contrary to what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 and 13, and Paul said, forgetting what is behind and reaching toward to what is ahead. Moses is talking about the, the, the past that we need to look, and then Paul said, forget the past. These two statements seem to be contrary, but actually Moses and Paul point their fingers to the same direction. Don't just look get your past and see what you could have, would have, and should have. But see your life in God, see who God was in the past, and then see who you are in God, and see who God is right now. And with the findings, you have to move forward to your future. That's divine perspective. Moses is talking about divine perspective to the Israelites because they are about to enter into the promised land and the big challenges are waiting for them. So Moses didn't say you have to prepare. You have to be ready for the battle. It's coming later. But the basic part of our lives is the faith that we find God in our lives. We find who we are in God. That's the basic faith of us. That's what Moses is talking about. We are not really separate from the past. The beauty of our life comes from the things that happened in the past. You know, we have this beautiful uh, ornament. I don't know if you know this or not. All these ornaments actually were handmade by a group of people in 1982. And actually, we have a picture. Would you uh, put a picture, Ben? And I noticed only two people, and Carol Krause and Jackie Irwin. I don't know the rest of the people. You might recognize all of them, but I only recognize two people. They, are the comi- they were the committee of designing all these uh, beautiful uh, ornaments. Also, they made this album. Have you seen this? This is the album that explains the meanings of each ornament. It's beautifully laid. You know, this is a very valuable. 35 years old ornaments and this album, it should be handed down to generation to generation at this church, right? They made this. And each ornament means Trinity, cross, God's love, and grace. So all these are handmade. So we have this beauty of the ornaments because they make them in some point in the past. So today, we have this beauty of Christmas tree. This Christmas tree is a new one. The old one was dedicated in 1982 too, but it was too old, so we set it aside, so we bought a new Christmas tree. So all these ornaments we have, 
met by some point in the past. We have the beauty of this Christmas tree met by in the past. We have the beauty of our lives because God planted his plans and purpose for our lives some point in the past. And he has grown them for us. That's why we are who we are today. We have what we have today. Because God has done great things in the past. We have to look at them. Once we look at them in faith, we can see where we need to go in God's perspective. You know, I am who I am today because of my pastor, Bill Russell. I came to this country 20 years ago, and my pastor, Bill Russell, uh, hired me as a youth group pastor. At the time, I was only 16. 16 years old kid is uh, ministering to other 16 year old kid. At the time, I was in college. I kept refusing his offer because at the time, I had a huge English and cultural barrier. But I am who I am because of what Pastor Russell did to me at the time. You know, I, before ca- uh, coming to this church, I don't think that I was going to go for a doctorate. And I already went through three different schools with two BAs and one master. So after finishing my seminary school, I was tired of reading books and writing papers. So I didn't think I was going to go for a doctorate. But when I came to this church, I noticed that you know, we have six different Bible study groups at this church. Six different Bible study groups. When I said this to other pastors, they think that we have a thousand church members here. Six Bible study groups. Check other church who has the similar size as we have. They either have a one Bible study or nothing. We have six Bible study groups. It's going really really well. And what they study is really deep, very applicable. It challenged me two years ago. Also, we have, we are the only church who has the Bible study at six o'clock in the morning. Can you believe that six o'clock in the morning? We are the only church. You know, we should be proud of ourselves. You challenge me to go for a doctorate. You might now recognize, but each of you influenced me to be who I am now and who I will be in the future. You know, we are on the last day of Sunday. I'm going to use this rope. Sorry, Tanner, I messed up. And I'm going to use this today. Let's think. We are 2017, we are on the last day of Sunday. We are about to come across the border of 2018. You know, instead of making a lot of plans and strategy and be excited to come across and be excited to jump over, we we need to pause ourselves for a while and see what God has done in this past year. As a follower of Christ, in our life we have a lot of scars and cut. We cannot just get rid of it. We want to get rid of all the things that we did wrong in this past year. We want to get rid of it, but we just cannot. As a follower of Christ, we have to carry it with us. Like this thorn. Pains and cuts, scars, suffering. As a follower of Christ, we have to carry it, humbly carry it with us to the next year that we put it in front of cross. That I believe God transformed our suffering and pain into the beauty of our life. That's what Moses talks about today. 
See what, what God has done in your life in this past year. You find yourself in the past. You find who you were before. Then you can find who you are today and see what God has for you in the future. You cannot just cut yourself from the past no matter what kind, no matter tough life you had before. You have to carry it and put it in God. It's going to transform into the beauty of our lives. Before finishing uh, my sermon today, I'm going to tell you a very practical and Christian way to see our lives today and in the past. Whenever I have difficult time, I often say these seven words. Would you put it up there? You know what? It could be worse. Can you repeat after me? You know what? It could be worse. You know, we're going through a tough time, but there are other, always other people who are going through tougher than we are. So whenever I have a difficult time, I talk to myself, Jay, what should I say? You know what? It could be worse. Ten years ago, I used to run six miles within three minutes, 30 minutes, and I had six packs, all right? But today, I barely run one mile within 30 minutes, and I have one pack. <laughs> so should I be sad and depressed? No. What should I say? You know what? It could be worse. <laughs> you know, I'm driving a two I'm driving a small compact car on a two-wheel drive in a snow and rainy day. I worry about what if I'm stuck in snow and what if I get an accident. Then I notice that you know, there's a Manda clock here. Manda clock drives brand new, nice, big SUV on four wheels. She never worries about the snow day. So should I be jealous and burn her car? No, what should I say? You know what? It could be worse. How about your life? How about you? You go home and you look at your husband and you know what? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't say it, all right? Don't say this. <laughs> Don't say this. Your life and my life could be worse without God's mercy and grace. This is a very practical way. Without God and His love in this past 2017 could be worse. But we have God's grace and love, so we are who we are. That's a Christian perspective. So in the upcoming year, let's take this Christian perspective and continue to walk with the Lord. Continue to trust in the Lord. So at the end of 2018, we all said, God has been with us. God has been with you. God has been with me. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. 2017, last Sunday, we look back on what you have done in this year and see that is truly amazing, Lord. We thought that we just walked ourselves, but we see that you have been there everywhere we went. Sometimes we had tough time, sometimes our lives was full of joy and blessing, but they all come from you, Lord. It is you, your grace and love. We are about to come across the borderline of 2018 for the next year, help us carry the presence, your presence, your blessing, and also our scars and cut. Take everything, Lord, and we humbly put those in front of you. You can transform all those things into the beauty of your lives. And at the end, we all say, thank you, Jesus. It's you. You have been with us. In your name we pray.
Amen.